For Native American, Inuit, Yupik tribes, whaling is a way of life, has been for thousands of years. It took courage and persistence to catch their prey of choice, the mighty bowhead whale. And when they did, no part of it went to waste. What they didn't eat, they used to construct tools, fashion weapons, build homes and toys. In 2007, for the first time after a 30-year ban on native whaling, 10 tribes were given special permission to kill a limited number of bowhead whales each year. Soon after, a sharp, wooden projectile was found embedded in the neck of a 50-ton bowhead caught off the coast of Alaska. It seems this wasn't the first time someone had tried to kill this whale. The weapon was designed to be fired from a bomb lance, a shoulder-mounted explosive harpoon gun. Odd, considering the patent for this weapon could be traced back to a factory in a once booming whaling community in Massachusetts in the year 1885. Scientists long believed that bowheads lived for about 70 years or so, but this whale had survived just such an attack about 130 years before. After using an experimental method for determining age by studying chemical changes in the eyes of bowheads, the results were stunning. One animal was found to be 135 years old at the age of death, another was 172, and the oldest of all, a male, aged 211, the longest lifespan of any mammal. The implications of this fact are truly astounding. Right now, just as you're hearing my voice, there may still be a handful of whales that were born during the presidency of Thomas Jefferson and that would have already been half a century old when Ishmael described whales as fish in Herman Melville's Moby Dick in 1850 still cruising through the icy northern waters. Some of these whales are old enough to have first been born into a world where every ocean was filled with the calls and clicks of countless others of their kind, who could be seen shooting clouds of water vapor into the sea air as far as the eye could see. But as these young whales began to grow, so did their value. Commercial whaling was a lucrative business, as their blubber was boiled down into an oil used to light city streets and homes. Anywhere the calls and clicks of whales could be heard, and anywhere a cloud of water vapor could be seen shooting up into the sea air, waves of sailors, sponsored by whaling companies based out of cities like Nantucket and New Bedford, were sent to kill them. Of all the species whalers targeted the most, the bowhead was among the most prized. Because even in a frenzied panic, they have a maximum speed of only 10 kilometers an hour, and their bodies float after death, making them ideal for harvesting. As the decades passed, and as the gears of the Industrial Revolution were turning, the human population exploded, while whales were steadily vanishing from the oceans, forcing sailors to travel further and further out to sea to hunt down the remaining populations, dwindled to next to nothing by decades of subsistence. But what the crew of a whaling vessel chasing after a bowhead sometime around 1890 didn't know is that the behemoth their job it was to hunt wouldn't just survive the encounter, or just outlive the man behind the harpoon gun even, but that it would ultimately outlive American whaling itself. Into the 20th century, after two world wars, dozens of nations banded together to preserve what little was left of the world's whale stocks, so greatly diminished by centuries of abuse. The world was running on electricity now, and had little need for the flammable flesh of oceanic giants. By 1986, commercial whaling was banned by most of the first world. Since the regulations took effect, bowhead populations have grown stronger and healthier as the years pass. Most of them are thriving young animals whose lives were preserved thanks to international efforts to rescue them from the brink of extinction. But still today, there are surely a few old giants gracefully cruising through the icy northern waters, veterans of a long war who still carry in their great bodies Victorian artifacts from a time long ago when they were what kept the world from sinking into darkness after sunset. I don't know just how long the memory of a bowhead lasts. No one does. But gazing into their eyes, I wonder if he can still recall the days, centuries before, when his kind filled the sea by the tens of thousands, 
only to be nearly wiped out and then brought back, where today the calls and clicks of thousands of his kind can finally be heard again. <laughs>